Hi, welcome. In this video, we will learn how to use Digiproctor's browser interface. You will enter the browser's interface page after clicking the start button when your test commences. This is how the interface page would look like. We start with the first element on the page, that's your test key. Your test key is displayed on the upper top left of the page. Having the test key displayed there is a convenience because you would need the test key for entering into your mobile upload app. If you don't want to type your 16 digit test key into the upload app, click this button for a QR code to be displayed, which you can then scan using your mobile. The QR code will automatically enter your test key into the mobile upload app, saving you the typing effort. If you hover your cursor over the test key or click it, your registered profile photo stored in Digiproctor's database will be displayed. This is useful when Digiproctor is being used in CBT examinations. In these exams, the test takers are physically sitting in the exam hall and invigilators can instantly authenticate the test taker by clicking the test key. The name of the test is displayed here and the timer here displays the time left for the test to get over. This shows the number of the question displayed below. Marks for the question is shown here. This is the question panel where the question and its options are displayed. You can choose your options for MCQ and MRQ questions here. For subjective questions, you will be displayed an editor which you can use to type in your answer. Clicking this button will open up a pop-up where you can read the test instructions. These are the group of action buttons which allow you to interact and change the question panel display, add accessibility features, etc. They will be covered in the next section. This is the live feed of your laptop's camera which is seen by the proctor. Make use of this feature to adjust your camera and seating position so that your face is clearly visible. Also check that there are no pictures in your background or people visible within the camera's covering. This is the notifications button. Notifications are broadcast messages sent during the examination by your institution to all test takers. You can see the number of notifications received displayed on the button. When you click the button, you will be shown the first line of each of the notifications received. Click on them to read the complete message. These are the previous and next navigation buttons. Clicking these would take you either to the previous question or to the next question. The previous button will be disabled when you are on the first question and the next button will be disabled when you are on the last. Clicking this button will display the calculator. The calculator button will be visible only when your institution has permitted it for the test. The next is the end test button. This is a very important button because clicking this button would submit or in other words end your test and once you have submitted your test it cannot be retrieved back. Therefore you will be given a cautionary message in a pop-up asking for reconfirmation that you actually wish to submit the test. Digiproctor will auto-submit your test on completion of the test time even if you did not click the end test button. This is the chat button. By clicking this button, you can send a message to the proctor that you wish to chat with him or her. You will get a pop-up message stating that your request for chat has been conveyed to the concerned proctor. The proctor will get an indication that you wish to chat and they would initiate the chat session with you when free. Since there may be other test takers also wishing to chat with the proctor, you will have to await your turn. When the proctor contacts you, you will see a chat window open and the proctor's message in it. You can now begin chatting with the proctor. Only the proctor can end the chat session. You can minimize the chat window by clicking here. 
and you can bring up the chat window by clicking here. This is the avail break button. The avail break button will be visible only when your institution has permitted you to take breaks during the test. Normally, you would get penalized by the proctor when you move away from your computer. Also, DigiProctor will reduce your trust score if you are not visible in front of your camera. However, if you avail your break by clicking this button, your absence from your computer for the duration of the permitted break will be excused. You will be shown a pop-up message where you have to confirm that you wish to take a break. A timer will be started which will inform the proctor that you are away on a break and disable the monitoring till the duration of the permitted break time. We will now see the question summary panel, which is on the right of the question panel. The top part of the question summary panel contains the summary of questions. In this, all means the total number of questions in the test, or in the case of multi-section test, the total number of questions of the section you are currently in. Attempted indicates how many questions you have answered. Skip means the number of questions you visited but did not answer. For example, the question will be marked skip if you left a multiple choice question without selecting any option. Mark means the questions you visited for which you were not too sure of the answer and therefore you mark them for review as a reminder to revisit them later. Below the summary is the navigation area where you can see question by status. The box which is filled in grey indicates the question you are currently on. Every question you visited has a colored triangle on its top left corner. Green indicates that the question has been attempted. Red means you have skipped this question and purple means it has been marked for later review. Questions with no colored triangle on the corner are those which you have not visited as yet. You can go to any question directly by clicking on the number. For instance, if you click on 8, you will be taken straight to question number 8. And if you wish to go to a question that you had marked for review, click on the question number with a purple colored triangle. We will now go through the action buttons available in the browser interface. The first is the reset action button. When you click this button, the selected MCQ option is reset. For instance, if option 1 in the question was selected and then the test taker decides not to answer this question and clicks the reset button, it would reset the option by unselecting it. Next is the Mark for Review button. When you click this button, the question which you are on is marked for review and an indication of this is displayed in the Question Summary panel as well as in the Navigation panel. Click this button when you wish to increase the font of the question and click this button if you want to reduce the font. Clicking this button will revert the font back to default size. The browser interface has three modes of display, vertical, horizontal and extended horizontal. This is the display button. Clicking it allows you to toggle from vertical display to horizontal display and vice versa. Shown on the screen is the vertical display with questions on top and options below. You may at times want to change this orientation, particularly if the question is very long and you have to scroll down to view the options. When you click the toggle button, the vertical display changes to horizontal. This helps because options move to the right of the question and you don't have to scroll down to view them. If you wish to increase the panel layout to the extended horizontal display, click the question summary button. This will hide the question summary panel and extend the horizontal display to the right. When you click the question summary button again, the display will toggle back to horizontal from the extended horizontal display. Also, the question summary panel will be displayed again. We will now learn about sections and understand how to use section buttons. 
There are three kinds of tests rendered by Digiproctor. Tests which do not have any sections. Tests that have sections, but the sections do not have individual section timings. And third, tests which have sections and each section has an allotted section timing. This is how the browser interface looks for a test that has no sections. The test name is displayed here. Test instructions are available here. This is the navigation panel. It displays all the question numbers. You can click on a question number here to go to that question. And once there, you can use the previous and next buttons to move forward and back. There is a timer on the top right corner, which shows how much time is left for the test to get over. You must submit your test before that time is over. And you can do this by clicking the end test button. If you do not click end test before the time is over, the test will be auto submitted. This is how the interface looks for a test that has sections, but no section timings. The test name is displayed here and the section name is displayed here. The section name would be the same as the section that has been selected in the navigation panel. Test instructions can be viewed by clicking this button. Tests with sections have a section instructions button in addition to the test instructions. Each section can have its own set of instructions. When this button is clicked, a pop-up is displayed that shows the instructions. This is the navigation panel. The names of all sections are displayed on this panel. Each section has a drop-down which can be opened by clicking the section button which is the right arrow icon. Once you click the section button, the navigation panel displays all question numbers of that section. You can now click on the desired question number to go directly to that question and once there you can use the previous and next buttons to move forward and back. You can enter a new section by clicking its section button. In the displayed screen the mathematics section button has been clicked and the navigation panel displays all question numbers of the maths section. There is a timer on the top right corner which shows how much time is left for the test to get over. You must submit your test before that time is over. And you can do this by clicking the end test button. If you do not click end test before the time is over, the test will be auto submitted. This is how the browser interface will look like for a test having sections and section timing. Much of the layout including names, instructions, timer and end test buttons are the same as in the previous test format. The difference is in the navigation panel and in how sections are selected and submitted. So we will start with the navigation panel. The navigation panel displays the names of all sections. For sections which haven't been opened as yet, the time allotted to the section is displayed alongside the name of the section. For example, as shown on screen, the allotted time for sections is 30 minutes. For sections which have been submitted, the status is displayed as completed. And for the section that is open, a timer is displayed which shows how much time is left for the section time to get over. The navigation panel displays all the question numbers of the open section and you can click on a number to go directly to the question. And once there, you can use the previous and next buttons to move forward and back. After answering questions in this section, you have to click the submit section button. Once you submit your section, it cannot be retrieved back. Therefore, when you click this button, a pop-up will be displayed asking for your reconfirmation. After your section has been submitted, its status in the navigation panel is changed to completed. If you haven't clicked the submit section button and the time allotted for the section is over, the section will be auto submitted. When a section is submitted, the next section in the sequence is opened in the navigation panel and its timer is started. For instance, when physics section is submitted, chemistry which is next in sequence will be opened and its timer start. You can click the end test button anytime during the test to submit your test. This brings us to the end of the browser interface tutorial where you learned the basic layout of the interface and how to use action buttons and work with sections.